Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to review some of the top connected fitness bikes on the market today. The Peloton, the Echelon EX5S, and the Nordatrack S22i. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. So let's start with which one's going to look best in your house. And this largely comes down to personal preference. So I'm going to throw them up on the screen, let you get a good look at them and decide for yourself. But personally, I'm drawn more to the Echelon and the Peloton. I like the color scheme, the clean lines. It just seems to fit a little bit better for my personality, but they are all solid options and they all look really nice. Moving on to resistance quality and considering we're talking about bikes, this is probably the most important topic. So how good is the resistance or how realistic is it and how much top end resistance do they have? And before I get started, I want to say that we're reviewing three of the top models that are out there. So the difference between third and first can be very minimal in a lot of these cases. So don't think just because I said something's in third, that means it's a bad option. And I'm going to start in third for this category with the Echelon. The resistance is actually fantastic. It is very good. It's there. It has a lot of top end resistance. It's got good quality resistance. I was very happy with it. But the other options just offer a little bit more placing it in third. But I will say that if you're comparing this category, all three of these bikes are so close. It really doesn't matter too much unless you want that perfect option. You want the best of the best. 99.5% of people will be more than happy with the Echelon. And that's the point I really want to make in this category is that they're all very close. And I don't think this category needs to weigh you in one direction or the other, unless you just want the best of the best for resistance. For second place, I went with the Nordatrack S22i. I actually think this one has the same amount of resistance quality and top end resistance as the Peloton. The catch is to get there, you have to go on an incline. And sometimes I just don't want to do that. I want to be able to ride on that flat road or just be locked into my position on a spin bike, but be able to crank up the resistance. Well, with the Nordatrack, you have to go at an incline to eventually reach those because that's when it pulls a magnet close enough to hit those really hard resistances. Not necessarily a huge deal. The big question to ask yourself is, do you really like inclines? and do you want to ride like that if you want hard resistance or do you want to be able to sometimes do that on the flat road but they both have that same top end resistance where it will really push you to your limits just a notch above the echelon and obviously that leaves peloton in first place it has great range with fantastic realism as far as how it feels in the resistance from very light riding all the way to the top end it is just a good quality option that you can dial it in fine tune it to exactly what you want with micro adjustments which a lot of these can do that the peloton just does it a little bit better and that's my favorite option when it comes to resistance but again they're all very close can i let you in on a little secret these videos take so much time and work so if you could the one thing i need is for you to hit that like button and hit it good it helps me out so much and i really really appreciate it thank you On to talking about the pedals that come with these bikes. And this one largely depends on how you're going to use it. Are you the only person that's gonna ride this bike? Cause if so, clip-in pedals will probably be the nicest cause they get you the most connected and let you really spin away and pull on that upstroke and give you that more realistic ride. But if you're gonna have multiple riders, cages are nice because then you don't have to buy new shoes for every person that might ride it here and there. And all they need is some tennis shoes, strap in, tighten it down, and they can use it as well. Let it be a good or large number of people option. And I'm gonna start with the Nordatrack. On one side, it does have a cage, and on the other side, it has a flat surface, much like a regular bicycle. This is great because anybody can use it, but at the same time, at this price point, I wish they included a clip-in. This is something that lets you take your ride to the next level, and they should have some version of a clip-in available, so I wish they included that. Next is the Peloton. As delivered, it just has clip-ins, so you have to have shoes to use this, which is great from the perspective that anybody that uses it can be extremely connected, but at the same time, if some people just want to casually use it and they might jump on a couple times a month, you probably don't want to invest in shoes, so that is kind of a downside of it. And then I'll wrap it up with Echelon. On one side they have a cage, on the other side they have a clip-in. This is how I think bikes at this price point should be delivered. That way, just anybody can use it, but the people that want to get serious can, so well done Echelon on this one. Next I want to talk about fit. And while this category might not matter for a lot of people, if you're on the shorter side or the taller side, it does. So I will keep this very quick, but I also want to make sure you listen to this in case you fall into one of those categories. Now on the short side, I brought in a professional tester. And the results were Echelon in third, Nordatrack in second, and Peloton in first. 
the echelon was just a little bit harder to reach. Now keep in mind, she's only four foot six. So most people that are above that are gonna be able to ride just about any one of these. But that was the hardest reach of the three. The Nordtrack, actually she was able to ride pretty well, a couple more inches taller and she probably would have been perfect. And the Peloton, as she is right now, she can sit and spin away on that thing without feeling like she's not tall enough. So that was easy. As far as taller people go, I'm six foot three. And I can say that the Nordic track is the one that had me feeling like it just didn't fit me well. My knees are very close to hitting the handlebars a lot of the time. So I'd say once you get to that six foot one or bigger, depending on your body style, you might start to feel like the Nordic track is closing in on you a little bit and you just can't ride freely without worrying about maybe hitting something. So that doesn't feel that good. But if you're smaller than that, it's probably gonna be absolutely fine. Now the other two, I didn't have an issue with at all. The way they're built and designed, I could ride away. I think most people are gonna be just fine with those two options. The Nord Track, you just might want to make sure you're not too tall. Another option that I want to be really quick on, but that is worth considering as a factor, is connectivity options. Most devices in your home these days connect via one of three ways. Wireless 2.4, wireless 5.0, or a wired Ethernet connection. Now most people use wireless 2.4 and this works just fine, except sometimes because everybody uses it, it becomes congested. So if you're in an area where there's a lot of houses around you, business around you, or just a lot of devices in your house, they can start to compete and cause a problem and your devices won't work as well, especially when you need to stream content like you would on one of these devices. And the quick fix is usually to switch to the five gigahertz wireless because less people use it and it's less congested. You flip over to that and things just start working great. If that doesn't fix the problem or it doesn't reach where your bike is, or you just want the best of the best and you don't want to have to deal with wireless, then you can set up a cord. You're not going to be moving these bikes a lot. So setting up an ethernet cord right to where you're going to be and just have it plugged in at full speed. Don't worry about any wireless problems. That can be the third option and can be really nice if you know you're going to be setting up like this. Why do I bring this up? Peloton, all three options. Echelon, all three options. Nordatrack, 2.4 only. It's a fact. User interface. So this one could come down to personal preference because one person's favorite could be another person's most hated. So I'll give you my thoughts, but in reality, they all get the job done. And to be honest, they all function largely the same. They have the screen layout that lets you get to settings and things like that. They have buttons for major categories so you can see things like live, on demand, your history, and different categories of your main content types. From there, they each have the different things that let you filter down and see exactly what you want, find the exact ride type or person you want. The one difference I can say between the three is that the Peloton has always been rock solid. I have never had an issue with the UI in the couple of years that I've owned it, where the other two in the short time I've had have each shown different bugs and just had different buggy experiences at time. Now I can say, all three are running rock solid right now. So more than anything, hopefully the footage that I've been showing on the screen has kind of helped you say, well, this is the one I like, or that's the one I like, because that's what it's gonna come down to, because they all get the job done. <music> Moving on to content, and this is what makes these bikes special. They're not just a bike that sits there and you do your own thing. They have screens attached to them with the UI and then the content that you can load on those with the instructors doing their thing to hopefully motivate you and make you do things that you wouldn't if you were just on your own. And being that these bikes are built in a way that when you get them home and you assemble them and you turn them on, you instantly have the ability to load content that motivates you. That's why you pay a premium for these. And that's why this category is one of the more important ones. And in third, I'm gonna start with Echelon. That's not necessarily a bad thing because they're all very close, but to Echelon, Studio content is just okay. It, it's solid, it still motivates you. You have a lot of instructors to choose from. You can find people that you kind of gravitate towards. It is good. It just lacks some of that vibe that you get from Peloton. It just makes you work that a little bit harder. It just makes you feel like you got that high-end product. It is still very good. I think most people would be happy with it, but it is step below the Peloton. Now, when it comes to scenic rides, it's just footage of very neat locations. So that's neat, but it's no different than maybe putting footage on YouTube that you know shows some location and just seeing scenic images. So it's nothing overly special, but it is something pretty to look at if you'd like to do that. In second, we're gonna go with Nordatrack. Now, everything I said for studio rides with the Echelon, pretty much you can mirror to the Nordatrack. It's good, it's solid, lots of instructors, you know, good content. It's just not Peloton, it's not the same. But the scenic rides with the Nordatrack are next level, better than all three bikes. And they're still largely the same type of content. They're going to unique locations showing you amazing footage. But the difference is, is that they're still instructor-led. 
So you have someone talking to you, guiding you, motivating you, trying to get you to ride harder, change resistance, and doing all those things that you get with a studio ride, but in that scenic environment. So if you're someone that likes those scenic rides and don't necessarily just want someone in a studio kind of yelling the same things at you, you want to be able to see some neat things, learn a few things about the location they're at, and still be motivated while you get to see something neat outdoors, outside of a studio environment, that bike might be really for you because that part about the Nordtrack, I truly love. And in first, I'm gonna go with the Peloton. Now the scenic rides are just like the Echelon. They're footage of some location, very neat to look at, but nothing special, not instructor led. But the in-studio rides, that's why other people have created bikes based off the Peloton. They just know what they're doing here. It is polished, the instructors are next level. They know how to motivate you. There's just something about them that just seems so much more professional and you know you've got the best option. It's a little hard to explain because from your perspective, you might think, oh, I just have a person in a studio riding a bike telling me what to do. All I gotta do is mirror what they say. But there's just something about how they motivate you, how they kind of draw you in. It is, again, just next level. So the Peloton, just with their ability to do that and just make you feel when you're on the bike, like you wanna just leave everything on the bike and burn as many calories as you can. And when you're done, you enjoy what you do and you're looking forward to the next ride. It's just something special. So I gotta give this to the Peloton. But if you're looking at scenic rides, I would give it to the Nordic Track. So kind of got to weigh those two options. End-to-end -end bike quality. So if you take everything about the bikes, you know, the bike themselves, how they ride, how they're manufactured, the software, the tablets, the support, everything that goes in these bikes and you rank them, where would I rank them? Coming in first or the best is the Peloton. And that might not be a huge surprise. And I don't want to sound like the Peloton guy because I have no brand loyalty. I don't care which one of these you pick. What I do care about is that I help you make an informed decision and you pick the option that's best for you. The thing is, the Peloton is just the best at most categories. They just have built a very good bike and put a very good ecosystem around it. The instructors, the UI, the feel of the bike or the quality when you're riding, it's just a great bike, but you pay for that. And that's why some of these other options might be enticing. In second is Echelon. And it honestly feels like they just copied Peloton. But I guess that's a compliment because I do like everything about the Peloton. If you watched my Echelon review video, you would know that I was having a lot of problems with a tablet to bike connectivity via Bluetooth. Well, I wanted to let you know that I've received a lot of updates from Echelon. And to this point, the problem seems to be resolved. I've done many test rides. It connects right up, works perfectly, stays in sync. That problem seems to be behind us. I do have some odd software problems from time to time, but overall, they seem to be heading in the right direction. If I was to summarize Echelon, I would say they're just like the Peloton, just a step behind in most categories, but at a good cost savings for you, making an interesting decision for you. And coming in third, Nordatrack. I wish I didn't have to say what I was about to say, because the scenic ride portion alone of the Nordatrack would almost have me picking that bike for my own if I had to pick one of these to keep. But when you look through the comments of my videos, for the Peloton or the Echelon, you rarely ever see people saying bad things or saying that you shouldn't get this product or there's issues or pointing out specific problems. With the Nordatrack, you have all sorts of comments saying about bike problems, arriving broken, breaking quickly after receiving, horror stories trying to work with support, and that can't be overlooked. In addition to that, this unit here has been broke for about three months. I can still do rides on it, I can still do testing, I can still do the things I need to do for these reviews but I will never finish a ride. I will get to be about 15 to 20 minutes into a ride and it crashes, it reboots, it has different things happen. Now, I worked with Nordatrack to try to fix this. They sent parts out, they replaced them, it didn't fix. And that process took about three months. Now, that didn't fix it. I'm now gonna be waiting many more months to try to fix it or whatever the next steps are gonna be. And I have a good feeling that I'll go at least a half year with a broke bike. On top of that, support isn't much better. If you have a problem with Peloton, you call Peloton. I think the same is the case with Echelon. But when it comes to the Nordatrack, you might have to call Nordatrack for Nordatrack issues, iFit for iFit issues, or Icon if they think it's a hardware issue. And unfortunately, all of them have no problem saying that they don't think the issue is on their end and that you need to call one of the other groups and wait on hold for an hour or two before they tell you it might be a different group. And am I telling you this because I had a bad experience with Nordatrack and I'm mad? No. If the features of the Nordtrack are the ones that are calling to you, that really gets you excited and you say the incline, the decline, the scenic rides, or some of the other features I've covered that you've seen in videos, if those are for you and they're going to get you working out and reaching your health goals, go ahead and get that bike. But here is what I'm trying to make very, very clear to you. 
if you decide to order the S22i. There's a good chance it's going to work great, but they seem to have a higher failure rate when compared to the other options. So when you get it, don't sit around. Don't say, yep, I'm going to start that and I'm going to start my journey in one or two months. Test it immediately and test it hard. That way you can identify if your bike does have issues. If it does, get on the phone with support immediately and find out what the story is. And in addition to that, look into the NordaTrack return policy. I don't know the truth on this one, but I've had a lot of comments saying that it is very bad and they charge you a lot of money to return the bike, even if it's broke and it's not your fault. And with that, if you can find the bike in stock at Amazon or other locations, you might want to consider purchasing through them so you can use their return policy. And again, chances are your bike will be fine, but I just don't want to see anybody get hurt, especially with this type of investment. So just take the right steps and make sure you safeguard yourself. And to NordaTrack, I like a lot of things about this bike. I wish I could say all good things, but you can do better. And I do have some ideas, so hit me up if you want to talk NordaTrack. And as I sit here recording this video and I haven't started editing yet, I'm hoping this video doesn't come across as me dogging NordaTrack. And to counter that perception and throw a little love towards the NordaTrack, here are some features they have that others don't. Incline decline, a phone holder right in front of you, weights that are easy to get to, a fan right in front of you, and push button controls for resistance and incline decline. A few last things before we do wrap up this video. There are three bikes, I'm trying not to make the longest video ever recorded, but it's hard to fit in three bikes worth of content into one video. So if there are things I've missed, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to answer your questions, and if a part two is necessary, I will do that for you. But to also help you out and give you the short version, if I were to summarize each one of these bikes, it'd go a little something like this. Peloton. The best, but at a cost. Echelon, very close to the Peloton, but a step below in most categories, but with more money in your pocket. Nordatrack, amazing scenic rides with incline decline functionality if you like that, but be ready to work on problematic product. So like I said before, when I create these videos, my goal is to help you make a more informed decision, to kind of lay out the information so you can decide that one is the best option for me. Not to tell you what bike is best necessarily, but to have you say, I like the features of that one, or I think that is best suited for me. So I hope I have helped with that. But until next time, here's to a healthier you, and have a good one.